Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. So today we continue our lecture about chapter 1 computer system. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for contributing in looking at my video. Okay, hopefully it will be benefit you in our your later studies. So for those who uh, did not subscribe, please subscribe my channel so that you can get more updates on my videos later. And I appreciate if you can put in some likes in my videos. Okay, so let's start uh, with uh, the lecture content for today. So today we will continue about our chapter 1 which is under structure and function. So a structure, okay, computer actually can be viewed in structure of component and functional operation that it can operate. So function is determined by the collaborative, the collaborative uh, functions of each component so that you can create a function of a computer. So like for example, you want to copy a file from one location to another location. You want to convert your file from video to audio. Okay, so this is uh, a part of the function of a computer where all the components inside the structure will collaborate to achieve this, the purpose that you desire. So actually the structure is the way in which the components are interrelated and also the function is the operation of each individual component as a part of the structure. So basically there are four types of function, a basic function that a computer can operate. So based on these four types of function, the whole computer is uh, operating. Okay, so means that no matter how difficult you think the function your computer can do, like for example, the, the game and you want to do uh, gaming or you want to do some, a lot of things, okay, with the fancy fancy software there. So it comes back to these four basic function of what the computer can do. So basically the first one is the data processing, second one is data storage, and the third one is data movement, and the final one is the control mechanism that operates, that control the operation for all uh, the other three. So based on this structure, you can uh, you can elaborate what kind of function your computer can do, okay? Based on these four basic function. So like for example, in case of this one, okay? So this one, data is being moved from one location to another location okay based on the device okay so here means that a data comes in and the computer will control the direction of the data is going out okay so this is where you have function of data movement and then you have data storage okay in this case any data coming into the pc will be stored in the pc storage and from the pc storage it can be pulled out to, di to display or something to any outside sources. Okay, so and then here in this case is you want to process uh, some data inside your PC. Like for example, you want to convert your Word document into PDF. So here from your storage, you have the Word document goes back to control and then process it to change it to PDF and save it back to the storage. Okay, and then this one is finally is, okay, uh, from processing data from external environment and put it in the storage. So in this case, it's like I'm recording my video. So here from outside is the camera and it processing the video that I'm shooting right now for you. Okay, and finally it will save in a video file in my PC so that I can upload them later. Okay. <coughs> So if you say about structure, we have uh, four more, uh, four functions, four, uh, four structure, four main structure of a computer, sorry. So the first one is the central processing unit, CPU. The second one is the main memory. The third one is the IO, which is called input and output, okay. And the fourth one is the bus, which is the system interconnection. So the CPU, Okay, it controls the operation of all the computer and perform the data processing function. So here is the CPU. 
oh, sorry, the CPU. So CPU is basically the one that controls all the data flowing inside your computer, the processing and everything here is controlled and decided by the CPU. Okay, so and then we have the memory. So memory is basically where you store the data that you want to process or you want to keep. So here is where all the information that is being used or being stored inside your computer will be uh, saved in. Okay, so you have four types of memory here. Here you have HDD, SSD, here is M.2 SSD, and here is a RAM, and that access memory. Okay, so next we have the input and output peripherals. So input and output peripherals, basically they convert all the physical signals back to digital signals and digital signals back to physical signals. So here you have like for example, you have printer, you have camera, so they convert all those binaries, okay, that you get, okay, and then you have inside your PC into for some sort of physical information like sound, okay, light, okay, and uh, even printing itself. And from them as well, okay, from physical signals as well, you convert it into binary, like for example, from cameras, from audio, and also even from your mouse movement. And then we go about system interconnection. So system interconnection is where you have uh, the connection for all those components like for example memory process and input output okay being combined here at one place okay so here we have example of a motherboard so motherboard here they will link all those components like for example you have your system bus you have your memory you have your cpu you have your input output they will be uh, connected under the bus on this motherboard Okay, the CPU itself is have a more delicate structure inside it. Okay, so inside a CPU you have here which is the control unit. Okay, so and then you have the arithmetic and logic unit, the registers and the CPU interconnection. So the control unit here controls the operation of the CPU and hence the uh, computer. And then you have arithmetic logic unit which is the performs the computer's data processing functions okay and then it means that here they will operate all arithmetic equation like for example plus minus divide and times okay so the plus minus divide and times usually they operated using the logic gates and then register register is a small memory inside a cpu so they've been used by the cpu like for us uh, in this case it's like our hands okay if you see that the hard drive is like a table or a cupboard okay so register is like a hand if you want to read a book okay you pick a book from the cupboard and put it into your hand first so your hand behave like a register and from there you process and read the book okay so this is what register do and then you have cpu interconnection in the same mechanism as the bus which is they provide the communication Okay, and uh, communication and data path along uh, between those computer unit, uh, the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, and also the registers. Okay. So basically, inside a CPU, this is an example of a CPU. <coughs> okay, inside a CPU, you will have registers, you will have arithmetic logic unit, you have uh, a lot more memory, okay, and then the core for you to process all those information which is involving registers and also uh, the ALU, okay. So you have cache, cache means uh, it's a part of a memory as well, okay, I will elaborate more in the memory chapter, okay. So from this point, okay, we'll go to the random access memory, okay. So here is where the CPU will be connected to the RAM, okay everything that need to be processed in your PC okay basically will go to the CPU so next okay uh, I want to introduce actually who invented the computer basically it's not invented it's designed okay so we 
our computer is basically called as the von Neumann machine. So who is von Neumann? So here is Dr. John von Neumann. Okay, so he developed in he developed uh, this uh, architecture in uh, in nineteen for nineteen forties. Okay, and he developed a prototype. Okay, uh, right after the World War Two. Okay, so he lived between nineteen o three until nineteen fifty seven. So here is a short uh, video about the computer being invented, uh, being uh, the computer that has been built by him and also his colleague who was once worked with an IBM as well. Okay. If I can do it. Very good. I succeeded. Yes. All right, thank you. This machine was the concrete embodiment of the Neumann's very great ideas and contributions which he has made to the electronic computer field. In 1946, Johnny asked me if I would join him at the end of the war in Princeton and help him to carry out in concrete form the ideas which he had been working on in 1944 and 1945. Of course, I jumped at the chance. We rushed to Princeton and got started. The machine that eventuated from that is the one you see here, and it contains essentially those things which the modern computer has in it, although in somewhat primitive form. This machine has stored program concept as its major feature, and that, in fact, is the thing which makes the modern computer revolution possible. The older machines required one to clumsily perform hand pluggings of connections, which took hours, indeed days. It meant that programming was an art, in fact, a very black art. And furthermore, it meant that the total number of instructions one could write were comparatively small. This new concept has been carried so far today that programs are written involving tens of millions of instructions, whereas in those days, of course, nobody dreamed of such complexity, but Johnny's idea made this basically possible. What, what is the stored program concept? Well, it's the notion that you can describe in a finite number of words in fact, a fairly small number of words in a fairly simple language, exactly and unequivocally the description of a problem. And that this description is then translated into binary digits and stored in the memory of the computer exactly as numbers are stored. This was the discovery by Johnny. You may say, what's so remarkable about that? Well, the only thing I can tell you in answer to that is it's just like the wheel. What's so remarkable about the wheel? When you look at it, you can't conceive how anybody would not have known that there was one. Indeed, it must have been that the moment somebody mentioned the wheel or somebody mentioned the stored program, everybody around us obviously knew that this was the way to do it. And in fact, we accepted it immediately. It was not one of these inventions or discoveries which is enormously complicated and few people can understand. It's tremendously simple. It immediately hit, hits a person and he knows that's it. So basically, okay, a von Neumann uh, machines, okay, is an example of computer architecture and organization okay used by modern computer as a reference so the one that you see in the video there representing the same architecture that we have been using up until today means that the same computer that you play a lot of high tech modern games is based on that huge pc that you see in the video Okay, so the von Neumann machine is basically a computer category based on the architecture, von Neumann architecture, which is under the stored program concept. Means that data and program can be stored in the same space, the memory. Okay, so thus the machine itself can alter either its program or its internal data by its own. 
So inside the von Neumann machines, basically they must have four things. First one is the main memory. The second one is the arithmetic and logic unit, ELU. The third one is the control unit. And the fourth one is the input and output. Okay, so the main memory is the one that stores data, okay, and also instructions for your computer to do. And arithmetic logic unit, okay, is the one that's capable of operating on the binary data. Okay, and then the control unit which interprets the instruction in memory and causes them to be executed. Okay, and then finally the input and output equipment is, okay, the equipment operated by the control unit. Okay, so this is the main four things that you need to know. So basically, basically the von Neumann architecture, okay, looks like this. Okay, you have the main memory here, you have control unit here, and then you have the ELU here, arithmetic logic unit here, and here you have the input output equipment. So this structure will represent the whole von Neumann architecture. Okay, so that's all for chapter one. Okay, hopefully you get all these videos that I uploaded before. And I've uploaded some exercise for my class under the Google Classroom. So you can look at those exercise for you to, to, to get back okay, about what we have learned during the uh, chapter. So that's all for today. Okay, I see you guys next time. So next week we will be uh, introducing you, I will be introducing you the number system. So hopefully uh, you will stay with me up until the end of the semester. And I am Dr. Sharif Fauzi Kamaru Zaman. Okay, uh, presenting you from University of Malaysia Pahang. So hopefully you, anywhere you are, Okay, please stay safe, stay at home, and still stay study. So I see you guys later. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you.